Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Tech Collection, which is the updated version of what was previously known as the Work Collection that included bags like the Tech Pack and the Day Pack. I've really enjoyed using these bags over the past couple of years, and I figured they were due for an update just given that the Active Line and the Travel Line from Air had both been upgraded fairly recently and so I was curious to see what changes would be made on these bags and as part of the refreshed collection there's also a new cable kit which is a really solid tech organizer there's a sling bag and a briefcase so lots of great stuff to dive into in this video before doing so I want to thank Air for sending the collection for me to test out and if you're new here welcome my name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear if you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic of the Tech Pack and the Day Pack, although the silhouette has been updated a little bit in general, the appearance is very similar to the previous edition of these bags. So still a very modern, sleek look. The Tech and Day Pack were some of the more minimal options in Air's lineup due to the front face it doesn't have some of the additional organization that the other lines have so you know it's a look that it's not going to be for everybody but i think it's going to blend in really well into a variety of environments particularly for exploring a city taking into an office or traveling as far as differences in the appearance between the tech pack and the day pack there's not a ton one is really just a larger version of the other the bigger differences will come in the organizational layout which we'll talk about later in the video as far as the materials, both bags feel really solidly built. They're offered in a couple of different fabrics. For the day pack, I have it in the 1680D ballistic nylon on the exterior, which is you know a fabric that I've been using with Airs bags for a long time. It's always held up well. The front face on this one is an 840D nylon that has a water resistant coating. Uh, so in general, feels like it's gonna hold up very well. I've had the other editions of the day pack in this type of fabric and I've never had any issues. And then for the tech pack, I finally have a chance to test out Air's VX42 X pack. And so the appearance here is gonna look a little different just because of that X pack texture, which you know stands out a little bit. And uh, I like the way that it looks so far. And X pack of course is gonna provide plenty of weather resistance. It feels really rugged. Both of these have some really nice YKK zippers all throughout, but one of the uh, awesome things about getting the X-Pack version is you actually get aqua guarded zippers on all of the compartments, whereas for the day pack or any of the bags that you get in the ballistic nylon, you'll have the aqua guard on the laptop area, but maybe not on some of the other compartments. Continuing along the outside of the bags, I was happy to see that both have an external water bottle pocket that offers a pretty good amount of space. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I typically carry with me very comfortably into the compartment. It's got some elasticity here. As you can see, it's not the deepest compartment, especially when the bag is a little bit more packed out. And then for something like a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler, you can see that it's a little bit of a struggle to get it in. You can really force it in there, but anything larger is not gonna fit. And you can see that that compartment is kind of at capacity. Of course, with the day pack being the smaller version, it might be slightly tighter, but just wanted to show that regardless of which version you get, you are still able to fit these size water bottles. And it seems like a pretty snug fit. So if you flip the bag over, at least with the 26 ounce, it doesn't slip out too easily, which is nice. And then because of the elasticity that they have, the compartments stay pretty close to the, to the bag when they're not in use to maintain that cleaner silhouette. And then on the other side, both have a handle that's gonna allow you to carry this like a briefcase. This is a nice addition to the day pack. The previous edition didn't have the side handle, so that's great to see that added here. The tech pack actually has two handles, so that's one of the differences between the tech pack and the day pack is this additional handle. You have one on the same side, as the water bottle pocket and then one on the other side. One thing that I thought was interesting about the placement of the handles on the tech pack versus the day pack is you'll see that the day pack has kind of a more centered handle, whereas it's slightly lower and smaller on the tech pack. So even though you get two handles with that one, I kind of like the implementation on the day pack a little bit more. Regardless, I'm happy that it was included. And then at the top with both of these, you get a really nice handle it's got kind of this comfortable seat belt like material. It's got a good amount of padding, comes up a good amount. The design of this has changed a little bit from the previous edition, but still just works great. Very easy to pick these up 
when you wanna use the top handle. And then as far as branding, as always with Airs bags, pretty minimal. You just have kind of the little Hypalon type tag here at the bottom with the Air logo. One additional thing to call out while we're talking about the exterior is that both of these bags managed to stand up quite well on their own. That's always something that was very distinct to this collection is that they have a pretty rigid shape and they're built so that they can stand up comfortably while you're placing this down next to you so you can reach down and easily access all of the compartments. Uh, so glad to see that that was kept here. Air in general has bags that can stand up pretty well, but these are the ones that are gonna stand up most consistently. So if that's a critical feature for you, that's gonna be one of the big bonuses of going with one of these backpacks. Moving into the capacities, the day pack is gonna come in at about 14 liters and the tech pack is a little bit bigger coming in at 16 liters. In general, both are pretty good minimal daily carry bag sizes. They're not overwhelmingly big. I was able to hold the majority of the items that I would typically wanna carry with me on a day-to-day -day basis. One thing about the fixed or more rigid nature of these bags is they look pretty much the same whether they're empty or they're full. So they're not overwhelmingly bulky, but they're never gonna slim down as much as some of Air's other bags. So that's just something to keep in mind. But regardless, with the silhouettes that they have, they still feel like they're gonna be great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying on to most domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the harness system, so far both bags have been really comfortable to wear. Air's harnesses in general continue to be some of my favorite in the industry. I really like the padding that they use on their straps. It's really comfortable, beefy, really broken in right out of the box. On the inside, they have a nice mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. I really like the kind of contoured shape of air straps. And then you also have an adjustable sternum strap with a magnetic buckle to help distribute the weight. And then as far as the back paneling, also really, really comfortable. Again, some of my favorite of any of the bags that I've tested out. They have just this great padding, same as the straps that's well distributed all throughout the back. And then you also have the same mesh here to provide some breathability and a good amount of elevation to create this air channel to provide you with some airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. No real difference in the harness systems between the day pack and the tech pack. Great implementation and I was happy to see that they both have a luggage pass through that's gonna allow you to rest the bags on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bags actually have a pretty similar layout overall. The biggest difference will come in how they handle the laptop compartment, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. In general, they both offer a nice variety of pockets to make it easy to find your stuff throughout the bag. And so starting off at the top, they continue Air's tradition of having really excellent top quick access pockets. So similar implementation on both of them, good amount of space. On the inside, you have a soft lining that's gonna help prevent against scratching. And so in one of these, I currently have my AirPods and my Apple Magic Mouse. And then I'll pull it out so you can get a better look at the inside. I always appreciate that this is also slightly padded, so just giving you a little bit more protection. Uh, this compartment does eat into the main area a little bit. I'll show that later when we dive into that compartment. And then on the day pack, I just currently have my sunglasses with their case, but again, soft lining, so you might not actually need a case or maybe a good spot to put, put your phone or anything more delicate while you're on the go. I like that both of these have this sort of a locking YKK style zipper, so you have to lift it up, be able to open it. They have a zipper garage to provide a little bit of protection. Again, just a slight difference in the AquaGuard protection, whether you get the X-Pack version or the ballistic version. And then on the front, both have a similar admin style compartment that has some good internal organization. They have a zipper that opens up pretty wide to allow you easy visibility and access to everything that's in this compartment. So the uh, front face can kind of be flipped down there to just kind of showcase all the pockets that are contained inside. So immediately, one of the things you'll notice is the difference in the lining for the X-Pack version and the ballistic version. So X-Pack, as with a lot of bags that come in X-Pack, has the bright orange liner. And so that's the case here. I think they both provide a nice amount of contrast. So I tend to prefer the gray liner a little bit more, but if you want the X-Pack version of the bag, you'll probably get this orange liner. Um, and then I like that both of these have a compartment that extends down to the bottom goes all the way down 
give you just a little bit more flexibility with what you can store. If you have something a little bit bulkier, this is where I tend to just toss in a couple of the pouches that I, that I like to use. So in the tech pack, I have my Alpaca admin pouch that has some my EDC accessories. And then on the day pack, I have the Air Slim pouch, which is one of the many great tech pouches that they have. And then the layout here has been updated a little bit from the previous editions, but it's still pretty much the same in my opinion. So you have you know two really nice elastic slip pockets on the bottom. These are gonna be great for some of the larger tech items that you might wanna hold. So right here in the tech pack, I have the USB hub that I use to charge a lot of my devices and my laptop. Then moving up along the back, you have some elastic slip pockets good for holding something like a field notes notebook. I have a pen and then a cable to charge my phone, my tablet, and you have a zipper compartment. Doesn't go all the way down to the bottom about the height of my hand here. Good amount of space here for any smaller, flatter items that you don't want floating around. I didn't actually have anything to put into that compartment, so I left it empty. This is also where you'll find a little lanyard with a carabiner. Pretty much the same here on the day pack. At the bottom, I have my mouse, portable battery and Bluetooth speaker, and then a couple more slip pockets where I have a nail clipper set, pen, one of my wallets, and then I don't have anything in the compartment here, just again, similar style lanyard with a nice clip. Currently have a multi-tool attached here, but great spot for your keys. And then both of them have a slip pocket that goes pretty much down past the middle. That's gonna be a good spot, maybe for a notebook, your Kindle, or maybe a folder. And then on the tech pack, you have a dedicated laptop compartment, which is not the case with the day pack. The laptop for that one is integrated into the main area. So taking a look at the laptop compartment on the tech pack, this is probably one of the reasons I would gravitate towards this bag over the day pack is the fact that it has a dedicated laptop area. Just to me, always makes it easier to get to my device when I need to. In this compartment, you have a separate sleeve that might be a good spot to separate a tablet or an additional file folder that you might be carrying. It's not a padded sleeve, but I always like having just kind of a separate area to make it easy to grab what I need. And then the laptop sleeve implementation is great, very similar to some of the bags that we've seen recently from Air. So the sleeve itself offers a good amount of padding. It's suspended off the bottom of the ground. On the back, you have a soft fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. Should be able to hold a 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably. I have a 14 inch MacBook Pro that fits in there very easily. And then pulling my device out with the compartment empty, you can now see just kind of the inside and how much this comes up. So even if you have a little bit of a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably with, but with the amount of padding protection and the fact that it's suspended off the bottom of the ground, it really feels like my device is gonna be really safe while I'm on the go. And then taking a look at the main compartments, both of these are top loading bags, so they don't open up fully flat. The zipper on these has been updated to go down a little bit lower than they did on the previous edition. So you get, although it's not clamshell style, you do really have a lot of access to the full kind of depth and height of the compartment, which is nice if you, you know, struggle to get things out of the bottom with the previous editions. And so, you know, pretty similar layout here. You're just gonna have maybe a little bit more space in the tech pack, especially with the fact that the day pack has the laptop compartment integrated. And so I kind of just distributed all of my typical items amongst the two bags. Good amount of space here though, even though they're 16 and 14 liters, I've always felt like they hold a good amount for their sizes. And so diving into the tech pack at the moment, I have the Evergood Civic Access pouch, one liter. I have the Air Pro Tech Kit, which I've talked about in a couple of recent videos. Really love that one. Great, just minimal tech pouch. I have the Evergood Civic Access pouch, which is one of my go-tos. And then all the way at the bottom, I have one more pouch. This is the Bellroy Tech Kit. I just threw in a bunch of pouches to show off the space because those are all pretty you know, sizable pouches. And even with all those things in there, there was still a little bit of leftover space. And so with this compartment empty, you can see it comes up a decent amount. I'd probably even be able to use this for uh, just tossing in a packing cube, a dop kit, and a pair of shoes, and probably be able to use it for a quick weekend trip. And then on the inside here, on the back, you have an additional kind of elastic slip pocket. You have a nice material here. 
it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground so if maybe if you want to store a tablet this could be a good spot to do so and then on the inside you have an additional zipper that will allow you to remove a plastic insert which is what allows the bags to stand up so well these inserts help them keep their shape so good that you have the ability to remove that if you prefer the bag not to be quite as rigid and then here at the top you can see the quick access pocket poking in uh, but you know really nice layout here good amount of space and then on the day pack side it's going to be pretty similar so at the top i have my dji mavic mini with its case i have my beat studio wireless headphones and then down at the bottom i have the new cable kit this is cable kit version 3 which i have in x pack to match the tech pack which i have here and you know the layout here has been updated a good amount i've really enjoyed using this um, in general it looks a little bit like airs dop kits which i've always been a fan of and then it's offered in x pack or in the ballistic nylon the x pack version has the aqua guarded zippers it's got a nice handle on the exterior and then you have a smaller quick access pocket on the front. It's not super deep, it might be a good spot for pens or styluses, flashlights, any sort of EDC type items. And then opening this up, you have kind of an accordion style layout, which has become really popular in general as far as tech pouches. It's got a good self-standing design, so you can place this down next to you and be able to reach whatever you need. And I really like this layout in general it's got these sort of dedicated sections with a good amount of space in the middle for maybe some of the bulkier laptop chargers or power bricks that you'll be using. And then on one side, you have a couple of nice elastic slip pockets, great for cables, other bulkier accessories. And then you have some slip pockets that are a little bit larger. So maybe for a wallet, notebook, you have this divider in the middle that's going to have just some good smaller space it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom but like the quick access pocket a good spot for pens contact lenses you know camera batteries just smaller things that you want to be able to access easily and then on the other side of the divider you have a couple of slip pockets i really like the elastic that's included in all of these it just makes it easier to take full advantage then you have three smaller slip pockets on the other side these seem to really be sized for camera batteries or smaller accessories, some AirPods would fit in there very comfortably. And then on the back, you have kind of a slightly more rigid sleeve here. So it could be a spot to hold uh, maybe a smaller tablet or e-reader, uh, a larger phone, just to keep it easily accessible. So, you know, in general, I think it's a really good layout. This is a little bit of a larger tech pouch compared to some of the others that I've used from Air in the past. So the Pro Tech Kit, you can see, looks quite a bit smaller than this. Uh, this is closer in size to something like the Evergood Civic Access Pouch. It's even a little bit taller, actually, you can see here. Um, but it's gonna be able to hold a similar amount to that. I also have the Bellroy Tech Kit here. And so, you know, it's gonna be a great option if you're somebody who has a lot of tech stuff that you're trying to organize that you don't want um, to carry a bunch of different pouches. This will be able to hold a good amount of stuff. So great job here. And then coming back to the day pack, very simple layout here as well. Similar to the tech pack, it has the zipper on the front that allows you to remove the rigid insert that allows it to stand up. You have a little slip pocket on the back that might be a good place to put your tablet. With the simple layout that this has, although it's not gonna have maybe as much space, again, toss in a packing cube, could use it for an overnight trip very easily. And then you have the laptop compartment integrated into this area, which I'm never as big of a fan of because I have all the stuff on top of my laptop, so it can be a little bit annoying to get it in and out. But the implementation here is great. Like the tech pack, it has a similar padded sleeve that is pulled up off the bottom of the ground so you can you know drop your laptop down and it doesn't feel like it's making contact with the ground and i currently have a 13 inch macbook air you can see there's plenty of leftover space so this should be able to hold a 15 inch laptop pretty comfortably and then i'll go ahead and pull my laptop out of this sleeve and now with the compartment empty again you can get a look at the back side with the soft lining comes up a decent amount and you know again feels like my laptop is going to be very well protected while i'm on the go whether it's my day-to-day -day or traveling and so in general i still really like 
the layout and the design of these bags. I was a fan of the previous edition, so it's great to see some of the evolution that Air has made to the layouts here while keeping a lot of what made these you know, great bags in the first place. So if you're a fan of the aesthetic of the work and now named Tech Collection and you're looking for bags that are gonna offer good protection for your essentials while also providing the ability for the bags to stand up well on their own, these are gonna be really solid options to take a look at. And then taking a look at the Tech Sling and Brief, although they have slightly different form factors, to me, they remind me of the Tech Pack and the Day Pack in that it almost feels like one is the larger brother to the other. They both have, you know, a really sleek aesthetic, very similar to the backpacks. They, I believe they're offered in X-Pack. The version that I have here are the ballistic nylon and the nylon face. So the exterior, again, is that reinforced 1680D. And then on the front face, you have an 840D nylon, highly weather resistant. You have the really nice YKK zippers all throughout. On the briefcase, you do have an AquaGuard on the main compartment that has the laptop sleeve. Then you have some really nice Duraflex hardware. So very rugged feeling, high quality as with all of Air's products. And then taking a look at the exteriors, both of them have handles that will allow you to carry the items when you don't want to wear them. Uh, so really nice kind of seatbelt like material on the tech sling, very similar to the backpacks. On the briefcase, you do have actual briefcase handle kind of style straps, so they come up a little bit more. You have two of them. They have this strap with a little buckle closure. If you want to open it up and actually access everything as you would a briefcase, these you know feel really rugged. They're durable. They don't feel quite as soft or comfortable as the handles on the other products, which is interesting. I kind of wish that they had used a similar style, but regardless, they feel like they're going to get the job done pretty well. Beyond that, moving into how you actually carry these, one is a sling bag, one is a brief, but both kind of allow you to do a shoulder style carry. They include a really nice, well-padded shoulder strap, same sort of breathable mesh and padding that we saw on the backpack strap, so glad to see that carry over here. It's also a pretty long padded area, which gives you some additional flexibility when you're wearing these to allow you to adjust it to fit your needs. Uh, on the sling bag, you know, you do wear this as you would any other sling bag. What's really cool here is you can reverse the strap or you can actually fully remove it if you wanted to and just kind of carry this as a really tiny briefcase. Uh, so really good implementation here, really rugged buckles, very easy to adjust this however you want. Then on the back panel for the sling, you have a nice amount of padding, breathability. You don't have super deep air channels, but given the capacity of this, uh, you know, I think that it works well. It's been comfortable even when it's a little bit more packed out. On the briefcase side, you have a more traditional strap that attaches via these D-rings. You have some carabiners and then, you know, an adjustable shoulder strap that will allow you to wear this like a brief. You can sling it around if you want to do that and then you can fully remove it if you want a cleaner carry overall. On the back of this one, you don't have any sort of padding or breathability like you do on the Tech Sling which I think makes sense. It just kind of matches the style of briefcases in general. What you do have here, however, is a nice luggage pass through that will allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling. So that's a nice kind of bonus there, particularly if you do a lot of business travel. And then as far as the capacities, the Tech Sling comes in at about nine liters, which is, you know, a little bit of a larger sling bag size, but that's great as it's gonna give you the ability to hold a good amount, an actual laptop without feeling overwhelmingly big. It doesn't feel like you're wearing a backpack. So a really nice balance there. And when it's packed out, it still manages to maintain a pretty slim silhouette and form factor. And then for the briefcase, this comes in at about 16 liters, which I was surprised by when I saw the specs because I don't think it feels as big as the tech pack, which also came in at 16 liters. So you know, volumes on bags is always an interesting and tricky subject. So it does feel like it holds more than the tech sling and it's a pretty large briefcase. So, you know, you can hold a good amount of stuff. It just, you know, just didn't feel quite as spacious to me, but it's still a good size, a little bit larger than maybe some of the other briefcases on the market. But as you'll see when we dive into the, you know, compartments, it does give you a lot of flexibility with what you can hold. And it still doesn't feel uncomfortable to wear even when it's a little bit more packed out. 
One last thing I wanted to call out about the Tech Brief while we're talking about the exterior is that like the backpacks, it does actually have the ability to stand up on its own quite well. So that's a nice benefit when you're you know, sitting down somewhere, you can place it next to you, easily access everything. It's very stable, it keeps its shape, it's got a pretty wide bottom, whereas the sling bag doesn't quite do that uh, very well. So one of the other differences between the two. And then jumping into the organizational options, both have a nice amount of pockets all throughout without kind of going overboard. I'll start on the back of the brief uh, where you do have kind of a hidden zippered pocket and I say hidden just because this kind of rests against you so it's not as easy to get to. Good spot for something like a wallet, passport, uh, anything a little bit more sensitive, some spare cash. You also have just a larger slip pocket where you could place maybe some documents, a folder. I don't really use this all that much, uh, but still nice to have. And then on the tech sling, you don't have anything on the back. You do have a nice quick access pocket on the front not super big or anything like that but it's gonna give you enough space to hold the items that you would typically keep in this type of a compartment so at the moment I have a cable and a power brake to charge my phone I have my AirPods. this might also be a good spot for my sunglasses or anything that I'm removing from my pockets while going through TSA no quick access pocket on the briefcase but you do have a admin style area like the backpacks and so it's got this nice wide opening you can see the sort of self-standing design in action here which will you know be very useful um, if you're treating this as kind of your digital toolbox and so you have some space here on the front where you could just toss in something like a pouch which is what i currently have here the alpaca patch that you saw earlier you could maybe place a jacket other things that you're grabbing more regularly and then you have a nice amount of organization built into the back and so you have some large slip pockets here that have really nice elastic material. They are pulled up off the bottom of the ground. And this one here, I just have my laptop charger and its cable. And then above that, you have a zippered pocket that goes about halfway down. Good spot for smaller items that you don't want getting lost. I just have a little multi-tool in there, which I wouldn't travel with. And then a little lanyard with a carabiner. And then on the other side, another large slip pocket. I really love the flexibility these provide. So the moment I just place my GoPro in there, since it's a little bulkier to show the elasticity that this offers, then you have uh, an area for a pen or something like a flashlight. And then next to that, one more slip pocket where I have my Apple Magic Mouse. And then on the back, you have just kind of a tall area. Again, good spot for folders, additional kind of tablet or e-reader documents. It's a little bit of padding here. so. Nice to have that extra area if you wanna use it. And then moving into the main compartments of both bags, I'll start with the sling. And this you know, just has this one wide opening here. A good amount of space, again, nine liters. At the moment in this area at the front, you have kind of this open space where I have the air tech kit that I've been using a lot. And so this is gonna give you enough space to rest larger items, maybe an umbrella, a water bottle, a camera. So really like the, the space that's offered here. And then on the front flap, you have another zippered compartment. It's got a nice material here. At the moment, I have my sunglasses, but a good spot maybe for some other small tech accessories. Inside of this pocket, you also have a little hidden air tag pocket as most of these bags have somewhere throughout. Uh, so nice to have that bit of security. And then some more elastic slip pockets on the back. Good amount of space in these. In one of them, I have the USB hub that I've been showing a couple times throughout the video. Another large one has a portable battery. And then in the middle, you have a smaller slot that's gonna be a good spot for pen, a stylus, a little flashlight. Then on the back, you have a slip pocket. It's not padded per se, but uh, you know, still gonna offer some separation if you wanna store a tablet there or something a little flatter. And then on the back, you have a padded laptop sleeve. This is where having the larger size of this sling bag comes in handy. This is maybe pulled up a little bit off the bottom of the ground, uh, but when you place your bag down, this one doesn't have the same rigid structure, but it's still padded all around. You are able to fit a 14 inch laptop in here. That's what I have, my 14 inch MacBook Pro. Anything bigger, definitely gonna just come up right into the edges. You probably won't be able to zip the bag shut but similar sleeve to what we saw on the back. So a good amount of padding. You have a soft lining on the back to help prevent against scratching. So really nice implementation there. 
And uh, I just like the layout, the space, and the form factor of the tech sling overall. And then moving back to the tech brief, you have again, just nice zipper that goes all the way down. And this one's a little bit larger. Again, it's 16 liters. It can hold a pretty impressive amount of stuff, especially for you know something in a briefcase style form factor. And even for some bulkier items, they're able to fit in there comfortably. Still have some leftover space for a water bottle, for a jacket, an umbrella, which is nice to see. At the moment, I have my drone, I have my bulkier headphones in here. They fit in there pretty easily. And then I also have the cable kit, which we looked at earlier in the video, even though it's a little larger, plenty of space. So yeah, I guess when looking at it empty like this, I could see how this could kind of add up to 16 liters um, in general. So really impressive amount of space here. You have again, an air tag pocket. You have a slip pocket here on front of the laptop area, not super padded, but Nice to have that separation for any flatter items that you're carrying. And then you have the padded laptop sleeve on the back. This is pulled up a little bit off the bottom and because you have that more rigid structure, again, you have the zipper here. If you wanna remove the insert to take away that structure, you can, but I like to keep it. And then this will be able to hold probably a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have is my 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see that there's plenty of leftover space and Pull my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. Even if you have something a little bit thicker, should be able to fit in there comfortably. And so, you know, it really feels like the devices are gonna be protected in both the brief and the sling bag. I really like the overall layout, the form factor, the aesthetic. And if you're somebody who prefers a sling or a briefcase style carry over a backpack, and you're looking for something stylish that's gonna offer, you know, the same organization and protection that you might typically find in a backpack. And these are gonna be some really great options to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Air Tech collection over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase these on Air site and I'll include links in the description below to the dedicated product pages for each of these items in case you wanna get a little bit more information or pick one of them up. Air now has so many great collections between this collection, the active line, the travel line. There's also the pro collection that it can get a little bit tricky to decide which one might be best for you. In general, all of Air's bags have really solid build qualities, really sleek, modern aesthetics. It's just gonna come down to, you know, kind of just the aesthetic preferences and some of the layout differences among all the different options that they have. So, you know, the tech collection, is really great if you like kind of the sleeker, more simple, modern look. They've always had kind of the shinier exterior on the front. And the backpacks in particular are really good self-standing options. They have the, uh, you know, the structure that we talked about in the video that helps them stand up well on their own. Some of the other bags and Air's lineups do that as well, but that these are some of the more stable ones in general. Uh, but, you know, I'm personally a big fan of the travel collection, even though it is a travel collection, I love you know, just some of the layouts and options that are provided on those bags and the aesthetic in particular is just the one that I like. It's kind of the most classic air look, the one that I've been using for the longest, but in general, any of the ones that you purchase are gonna be, you know, just really solid, versatile bags uh, that are gonna come in at a pretty similar price point. And if you're looking for other, you know, kind of great tech bags to consider, I would recommend taking a look at some of Bellroy's options. They've come out with some really great ones as of late. The Transit Work Pack is one of my favorite everyday bags, really durable, slick, you know, it's got a clamshell style opening, great laptop protection. It's just got a little bit more of a subdued vibe than the airbags, but still something that's a little bit just kind of more professional feeling, it's gonna work well in a variety of environments. So if you're interested in just something a little bit different than Bellroy's bag, can be great options to take a look at. And I would also recommend taking a look at some of the options from Troubadour. They have some really great bags that uh, have some interesting gym features. They remind me a little bit of the active collection and that they have dedicated shoe compartments on some of them. They have really modern, uh, just slick looks. They are, seem to be made to pair well with a nicer outfit and you know, just really good layouts. Pretty premium price bags are a little bit more expensive than these. So if you have a higher budget, but that aesthetic really just clicks for you, then those are gonna be some great options to take a look at. And then the last options that I'll recommend are some of the great bags and gear offered by Evergoods. The aesthetic on those is gonna be a little different than these. They're definitely more crossover packs that are meant to be used in the outdoors as well as an urban setting. I really like the appearance of all of their products, just really subdued. It feels like it's gonna blend in very well. They use very high quality materials. 
They have comfortable harness systems. I find Air's harnesses to be a little bit more comfortable for my preferences, but they're very, very good. The organizational layouts on their bags are fantastic. They have the CPL24, which you know has the clamshell style opening. They have the CHZ22, which is a top loading bag. So they have, like Air, a nice variety of different products to pick from. They also have some of the best tech pouches in the game with the Cap 1 and the Cap 2. So you're gonna have some good alternatives there that'll pair well with the aesthetics and the layouts that Evergoods offers. And so if you're looking for something with a different vibe than this, but just still really premium and versatile, then those are gonna be some excellent options to consider. With that being said, the Air Tech Collection holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for really high quality and sleek bags and gear to keep all of your tech organized and protected, then these are gonna be some excellent options to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the tech collection and how these items compare to some of the other great tech and EDC bags and organizers that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank Air for sending the collection for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.